ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلام عليه قال الله تعالى في القران العظيم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال تعالى ايضا يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار we start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him and we seek his forgiveness and we seek his assistance we seek refuge with Allah from the evil that may reside within our own selves and from the bad consequences of our own deeds. Whomsoever Allah has guided, there is no one who could lead that person astray. And whomsoever Allah has left due to the choices of that person. Whomsoever Allah has left due to their own choices, then no one has, has the ability to guide them after Allah has abandoned them. We bear witness without apology that there is nothing worthy of worship besides Allah. He is wahda, He is one, unique in His oneness, complete in His perfection, and incomparable to His creation. We further bear witness without apology that Muhammad وسلم, is His last and final messenger. We've been talking, at least while I've been up here, about the last few ayat from Surah Al Hashr. We started with. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah wa tanzur nafsun ma qaddamat bi ghad wa attaqu Allah inna Allah khabiran bima ta'amalun I wanted to start with that one and we went on to wala takunu kal ladhina nasu Allah fa ansamu fusum do not be like the people who forgot Allah and Allah caused them to forget themselves and I wanted to continue that with this ayah la yastawi ushabu nar ushabu jannah ushabu jannati hum al faizun all three of these ayat have this premise of being be mindful of what we put forward for ourselves for tomorrow. That's where the whole the, 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 the topic started. And Allah tells us in this ayah that we're talking about today, Do not equate them. Do not equate the people of the hellfire with the people of paradise. And you'd wonder, how, how possibly could someone do that? Now we live in a time where role models are key to everybody. Everyone's looking for the next guru or the next scientist that has something cool to say or the next athlete or the next singer or the next Muslim speaker or the next, 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 next. And Allah says, لا يستوز حب النار حب Do not equate the people of the hellfire with the people of paradise. So how are we to know through the people that are living today, who are the Ashab al and who are the Ashab al Jannah? You can't point fingers at anyone either way. You can look back at the people of the past and learn about Ashab al Nar that way and Ashab al Jannah that way, and that's how best we can um, have the ability to, to emulate them and be amongst them. Some observations, and there might be many of them, but some that have kind of came up with for this topic are first and foremost the Ashab al-Jannah and the Ashab al-Nar have an issue of taqwa. One group has taqwa, Ashab al-Jannah, inshallah, they have taqwa obviously. But then Ashab al-Jannah, now what do they have? You would think to yourself, the first thing that should come into our head is the opposite of taqwa. The opposite of taqwa could be what? Ma'asiyah, kufr, this, that, all these different things that people may come up with. 
But Allah was clear when He said in a surah that we teach to children. That Allah knows the fujur and the one who has taqwa. So the opposite of taqwa is fajr. Fajr. SubhanAllah. Not kafir. Fajr. Because the one who doesn't know Allah can't really fear him. Can they? Taqwa is for the one who knows Allah. Fujur is for the one who knows Allah but doesn't care. Muhammad described the hypocrite. And he described them in one narration in three ways, another narration in four. When they speak, they lie. When they're given a trust, they betray it. When they take an oath, they, they prove treacherous. And the fourth one is when they argue with each other. They do so with bad manners. Fujur. They boycott each other, they insult each other, they take to the internet and talk about each other, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And may Allah save us from amongst them. Because the people of Taqwa, the people of Taqwa, they are conscious of Allah, and even if they make a mistake, and I'll get into that after this, inshallah, they know how to apologize for that. Because you think of people of paradise, and Shaitan wants you to think of these perfect people that skip through life and pray all the time and they, they, they're always able to do things. And Shaitan wants you to think that because he wants you to think that you can't be among them. He wants me to think that I can't be among them. But if you're alive today and you say, La ilaha illallah wa Muhammad Rasulullah, inshallah you have a chance at being among them. Because even though they're not perfect, these people of taqwa, these ashab of jannah, they go back to Allah and they ask His forgiveness. And they don't have a problem with apology. That's the second one. No problem with apology. We'll use the argument rule that we talked about a minute ago where the people of Fujur, they argue back and forth and they quarrel back and forth and they talk about each other back and forth and get wives involved and children involved and everybody else involved. But, Ashab Jannah, they fear Allah. And they know that they have the same Lord as the one who they are arguing with. So they end it, squash it, for the sake of Allah. Why? Sahabi Jannah have something called priority placement. Priority placement. What's a priority? Sahabi Fujur, Sahabi Nar, their priority is what? Winning an argument. Scoring points with each other. But Sahabi Jannah, their goal is to reach that place that Jannah that Allah has promised to them. They want that. They want that more than they want some silly argument. They want that more than they want to score points on their brother or their sister or anybody for that matter. Because Jannah is the priority. Everything that they do, inshallah, may Allah make us from amongst them, Jannah is their priority. When they wake up in the morning, Fajr is first on their list, inshallah, Jannah. Two rakat before that, if they can get it, Jannah. After that, they read a little, if they can, Jannah. They sleep, they wake up, they go to work, they go to school, they do what they can for the sake of Allah, for their family. Jannah is in their, is in their brains, inshallah, all the time. As much as possible. Because habits grow. And when you're living in this life, and you're running through this life, and you're going through it, and you're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, know that these things get stronger. And it becomes more of a habit than it might be right now. Priority, placement. Ashab al Jannah, they have asset management. You know these business terms everybody likes to use now. People think of assets, they think of money, and they think of houses, and they think of businesses, and they think of all these different things, when the most important asset that we have is time. Time is your most important asset. Your time never comes back. You hear this all the time. You hear this every day, probably. That money can be replaced, and, but time never, never gets replaced. <coughs> People of Jannah, they know that they're only here for a certain amount of time. And they try their best, to the best of their ability, to relegate that time, to prioritize those things that are important. First and foremost, the one who gave them their time. Allah Ta'ala gave you your time. 
Blessed be the one in whose hand is everything. Everything. Al-mulk lillah al-wahid al-qahar. Your time that you have throughout the day, your 24 hours that you have throughout the day have been given to you by the one in whose hand is the night and the day. So when you say, well, I don't have time, Allah knows fully, Allah is fully aware of the amount of time that you have because He gave it to you in the first place. So the Ashab al Jannah, they prioritize their time. They try to maximize it to the best of their ability. That doesn't mean that they don't do anything. That doesn't mean that they just sit in the masjid all day and pray and do nothing else. Because what's the sense of having, of having taqwa if you're not out amongst the people, if it isn't tested? We don't have cloisters and priests in Islam where we just stay in the masjid and sleep there and do nothing. But while you're doing those things, who are you remembering? What's in your head? That's another thing. What are they saying to themselves? What are they saying to themselves all day? Are they quoting lyrics to songs with the most vilest meaning to it? You know, when you, when you, when you listen to when you hear kids especially, when they say things, oftentimes in these songs they don't even know really what they're saying. I said, do you know what you're saying? You make them write the lyrics out. <laughs> if they would dare. SubhanAllah. What are the people of Jannah saying in their head? What are they saying? La ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la lahu al-mulku lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir which is the highest form of remembrance of Allah. Do they say that all the time? Of course not. They say it more often than they don't. And they definitely say it more often than they would quote, quote some silly song lyric constructed in someone's washroom somewhere. Definitely. And the question that you would ask yourselves also about this, where are they now? Where are we now? If you ask yourself, where are you? People would say, Oakville, Ontario, Canada, North America. It's all the same for the people of Jannah because it's all one place. A dunya. That's it. From Cairo to Kazakhstan to Oakville. Dunya. All of it. And that's not bad. It just means that you know where you are. Because you know that the dunya is temporary. You know that you're going to be here 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 100 years, 3 hours. You know that you're going to go from here at some point. Everybody says it. A lot of people say that. They want to struggle for it. Struggle. Run for it. Fight for it. Cheat for it. And even die for it. But what does the last say? It's the people of Jannah. They know where they are. And they also know where they want to be. That the akhirah is better for you. But then what? Because if you fear Allah and you walk through this earth fearing Allah and worshipping Allah, we should know that there are two places in al akhirah that we could end up. And we're trying not to end up in Ashab al Because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives we also know that Allah punishes. We know that His punishment is real. His forgiveness is more. His forgiveness has precedent over His anger, but His anger is still very real. Can you imagine? Brother, you could get fired. Sure, you could. May Allah save you from that. Brother, you could lose your business. May Allah save you from that. Absolutely, I, I hope none of that happens to any of us in here. But know that if it does, Allah can replace it with more and with better. But also, it could always be worse. It could always be better too, but it could always be worse. So they worship Allah between fear and hope. Allah says, قُلْ عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ ذُنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ وَالْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ So even though they worship Allah in a fearful state, they also worship Him in a hopeful way. Because they know that 
Allah forgives all sins to whomever He wills. And he, they also know that when Musa was sent to Pharaoh, a tyrant, a devil, literally a two-legged devil, who said, Anna rabukum a'la, Allah told Musa to talk to him, Qawlayya. So what about you, Akhi, who says, Subhana Rabbi al-A'la? How easy will Allah be with you if you're conscious of Him? Qawlayna for Fir'aun. What about you, Ibadullah, who came out here today in the, in the heat, in the, on the Friday when everybody else is working? What about you? How easy will Allah be with you if you speak to Him? If He told Musa to speak to Fir'aun, Qawlayna, when Allah meets you, Akhi. When Allah meets you, inshaAllah, and you've prayed to Him and you've tried your best to be Ashab al Jannah, how do you think He'll be with you? You're saying, Subhana Rabbi al A'la, Subhana Rabbi al A'zim, La ilaha illallah. You're saying all these things. Fir'aun said, Ana Rabbukum al A'la. And until his death, Allah gave him enough time to repent. But you, you are, inshaAllah, Allah maj'alna min Ashab al Jannah. You have a chance to be. You have a chance to be. Never ever get that out of your head. You have a chance to be from the Sahaba Jannah. 25 years ago I became Muslim. Before that I didn't know where I was going to end up. And I don't even know now, but at least I have a chance. Shadu la ilaha illallah, shadu anna Muhammad al Rasulullah is your ticket to Jannah. La yastawi Sahaba Nar, or Sahaba Jannah. Or Sahaba Jannah, who is fat, is who is the poor, 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 Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala minna nabiyya ba'da wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasimu kamira Ashabu al-jannati humul fa'izu Akhi You know when you work hard all your life for things You go to school from the age of four onwards until only Allah knows Either you go all the way to become a PhD or you go further than that or leave earlier than that you work so hard. Do everything that they tell you to do. You go to school, you get a great job and a good career, and that's fabulous, mashallah. Those are success, by the way, and I'm not saying it to compare the two. I'm not saying you should completely throw one away and have another one. I'm saying you can have both. You can have both. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ don't pick one, pick both, inshallah. But remember, that the real successful people are those Ashab al Because no matter how long you stay here, you're going to leave at some point. But the people of Jannah, you know, Allah talks about Judgment Day as Qareeb, as close. To Allah, it's all the same. But He describes Judgment Day as close, and He tells you that you're going to be in Jannah forever. SubhanAllah and when Allah says forever, it's not like the way you say it. It's not like 20 years or 30. I lived here in Oakville forever, bro. Maybe five years. You feel like you've been here forever. Allah says, "Qadidina fiha abada, rabi Allah, rabi Allah, anhum wa rahman." Allah is pleased with them, and they are pleased with Him. Fali kaliman khushi Rabba, because they fear their Lord. On Judgment Day, Inshallah, He wanted said to you, "Ya yutu, ya yu, ya ayatu al nafsu mutmain." You want to be called that on Judgment. Return back to your Lord, you please with him and he's pleased with you. As long as you're living, you have a chance to be among them. Don't let Shaitan tell you things like you don't have time. You have time. You don't have the effort. You do have the effort. You don't have the energy. You do have the energy. You don't have the ability. Yes, you do have the ability. You're breathing. You're living. You're worshiping Allah now. Allah Mujahid Musa'ab Jannah. Want it. 
Choose it over everything else. Don't let anyone ever take you out of that. Choose it over everybody else, inshallah. Choose Jannah over everything and everyone else. Choose Allah over everything and everyone else to the best of your ability. And may Allah forgive us where we fall short. Inna Allah malaikatu sallu ala nabi. Ya ayyu ladina amanu sallu ala Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Kama salli ta'ala ala Allahi wa ala Muhammad. وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد قوموا إلى صلاتكم